In this lesson, you will learn about the different types of links permitted in XML documents. You will also see how to author XML elements for each type of link and how to declare these elements in a document type definition or DTD. The hyperlinking of HTML files is a cornerstone of the World Wide Web. Without the ability to link documents, it would be impossible to even use the word web because each document would exist without some kind of connection to other documents. When you link HTML documents, you simply use the A element with the href attribute to declare the URL of the linked document. The text or the image between the A and slash A tags becomes a clickable page element and when a user clicks on one of these elements, the browser loads the document at the URL specified by the href attribute. This simple one directional linking is all that is possible with HTML. XML, on the other hand, allows a richer type of hyperlink. Shortly after it released the XML standard, the W3C also proposed two XML linking standards, the XML linking language abbreviated XLink and the XML pointer language abbreviated XPoint. These languages describe the different kinds of links that are possible with XML. In keeping with XML's philosophy of extensibility, XML links are surprisingly flexible and allow a much richer type of hyperlink than is possible with HTML. The extra power you get with XML links comes with a price though. There is a fairly large reserved attribute set used to support them. Remember that XML documents are meant to be processed by many different types of programs. Some of these programs will be browsers, though not all of them may be site-oriented. Browsers that render to a speech synthesizer or a braille printer don't have the ability to make an HTML hyperlink underlined and in color. So, they would have an even greater challenge in presenting the more complicated XML links to their users. Additionally, there are automated programs like search engine spiders that need to be able to follow links to do their work. Both classes of program need the extra information provided through XML link attributes in order to support XML's more robust type of linking. The XML linking language or XLink defines two general linking structures that XML authors can use in their documents. These are simple links, which are one directional links from one document to another. Extended links, which are multidirectional in the sense that they can point to more than one document. Regardless of the elements you choose for your links, however, both simple and extended link elements have the XML colon link attribute in common. In a simple link, XML colon link is set to a value of simple, whereas for an extended link, XML colon link is set to extended. Simple links are very much like the kind of link you create with the A element in HTML. Since you get to make up your own XML elements, there is no reserved element for setting up a link. You are free to use A, link, simple link or whatever element suits you. What is reserved, however, is a set of attributes for the simple link elements you choose. These attributes are summarized in the table shown here. All the attributes are optional, except for href, which is required. The list of elements may seem overwhelming, especially if you are accustomed to just using the HTML A element with the href attribute to set up a link. 
A simple link has a large number of attributes so that a document author has much finer control over the links. Presentation The title and content title attributes are used to provide descriptive titles to the display program so that it can inform the user as to the titles of the linked document and the link itself. This is more useful than providing just the URL of the linked document when users position their mouse pointer over the link. Behavior The actuate and show attributes play a great role in determining the behavior of the link. Actuate specifies what action should invoke the traversal of the link. Auto if the link should be traversed automatically or user if the link should be traversed in response to some user action. Show tells the display device whether it should display the linked document embedded in the current document embed as a replacement for the current document replace or in a completely new window new. Authors can provide other behavior by using the behavior attribute. Role A link's role is simply a description of the link's meaning within the document. Similarly, the content role tells you what the role of the linked document is. The role related attributes provide a good example of information that is used by automated processing programs. Specifying role information is not so important for the user as it is for programs that process an XML document for non-display reasons. Suppose, for example, you had a document in which each new term was linked to a document that defined it and gave some examples of its usage. Suppose also that you had a program that produces a glossary by processing the XML document and gathering up all the definitions. Then you could specify the link role and content role as definition. This naming structure would make it extremely easy for the program to zero in on the terms that have definitions and the documents that contain the definitions. In addition to the reserved attributes, XML authors are free to introduce their own simple link attributes as needed. The only restriction is that attributes that begin with XML are reserved by the W3C. So any attributes you create should not start with these letters. Even though the href attribute is the only one that is required, Several of the other simple link attributes can be used as well. If you anticipate setting some of these attributes equal to the same values for all your links, you can specify those values as defaults in your DTD. This relieves you from having to type them out for every simple link you create. The default values in the DTD make it less of a core to type out link code. Extended links differ from simple links in that they link to multiple documents. This means when users click on an extended link, they should be presented with a selection of documents to load rather than just one. This is a more robust type of link than is possible with HTML and promises to make browsing XML documents a richer experience for the end user. Because extended links are more complicated, you need two XML elements to define them. The first element is a container element for the entire link and the second element is used to specify the various documents that comprise the link. Here, the extended link is used as the container element for the link and locator as the element for setting up the individual linked documents. Remember that you are free to use other elements of your own choosing instead. Using the extended link and locator elements, the basic setup of an extended link would be as shown here. Each element can have a number of attributes. 
the attributes listed are all reserved for use with the two extended link elements. Specifically, the extended link element can take the attributes listed here. Each of these attributes has the same meaning in an extended link as they do with a simple link. When you are setting up an extended link, you would set the XML colon link attribute equal to extended to accommodate the different kind of link. The locator element can take the elements shown here. In this case, the locator element takes the href attribute because it is this element that sets up the individual links that make up the extended link. The href attribute would be set equal to one of the URLs that the extended link points to. The XML colon link attribute should be set to locator when used within a locator element. It is possible for the component links to be out of line rather than in line. It raises the possibility of the processing application having to access several different files to determine what all of the links point to. To make this kind of processing easier, the XML standard allows for a logical grouping of linked documents called an extended link group. Setting up an extended link group requires two XML elements, one to contain the entire group and one for each of the documents in the group. As with all XML elements, you can name these elements whatever you like. Using XLink group and doc for the purposes, a sample extended link group might look like this. The XLink group element takes the XML colon link attribute set equal to group and the steps attribute. The steps attribute is included because the documents in the extended link group may themselves contain extended link groups that require further processing. In these cases, the steps attribute tells the application how many document levels it should traverse when processing the extended link group. The doc element is an empty element that takes the XML colon link attribute set equal to document and the href attribute. href specifies the URL of one of the documents in the extended link group. While they are not directly related to what a user would see on an XML browser screen, extended link groups are important for rapid processing of documents that contain out-of-line extended links. This underscores a point that many new XML authors need to keep in mind. You are not just authoring documents for a browser that will display your content. You are also authoring for programs like spiders that will process your documents in less visible ways. The other aspect of XML linking involves the use of pointers. Pointers are used to reference an element or sequence of elements in a document tree. This allows you to do linking within a given document rather than linking to something in another file. The use of pointers is governed by the W3C's XML pointer language or XPoint. To see how to use pointers, let us consider the XML based email. You can use pointers to access the elements on this tree or the text contained by these elements. In the email example, the email element is the document root and is accessible by the root keyword in the XPoint language. All other elements in the document are children of the document root. Thus, you can use the XPoint child function to reference them. For example, the function shown here would refer to the fourth child element of the root element. In this case, it would be referring to the BCC element. Since the child elements of the document can have child elements of their own, you can also use the child function 
on these elements. For example, this function would reference the first child element of the first and only body element. Thus, it refers to the paragraph element. If you are not comfortable referencing elements by parent-child relationships, you can give each element a unique name with the ID attribute and then use the X point ID function to reference the named elements. For example, suppose we change the two element as shown here. Then you could reference the two element by saying ID of my element. Further, you could reference the text contained by the two element like this. X point allows for many other referential relationships within the document tree, including ancestor, parent level and above, descendant, child level and below, preceding, following and sibling. Further, it also supports the notion of a spanning pointer. A spanning pointer takes a form that defines a range of elements in the tree as shown here. In the case of this code, the spanning pointer refers to the second through sixth child paragraph elements of some parent element. X point is still in a draft stage and has yet to be finalized and adopted as a standard. What you have seen here should provide you with a flavor of the type of linking that will be possible with X point. The X point requirements list says that X point should be easily incorporated into URLs. So you should expect to see href attributes that use pointer values in the not too distant future.